Hey folks, the Safari Off-Road Adventure at Six Flags Great Adventure has reopened, so let's go. I should mention that it was during the pandemic that they switched over to driving through, allowing people to drive their cars again. But back in 2019 and before that, for a few years, they kind of had this other system here where they had the huge trucks a la Kilimanjaro Safaris at Disney's Animal Kingdom. So they've really switched it up, switched it back. And I'm curious to see what they've changed. They do have a sign here saying that the ride experience is approximately 30 to 45 minutes, which means better take a bathroom break before you get in. However, how does that work if, say, this is all backed up over here? You're waiting in line for two hours and then need to use a bathroom? I feel like that situation must come up once in a while. Hey, y'all, all clear means we are off. Bye, everybody. Hi. How you doing today? Hi. All right. Y'all ready to see some animals? Hell yeah. All right. The first section of the tour that we are going to enter is going to be our America section. The America section includes wildlife that can be found in both North and South America. So if you on your left, you might notice that a lot of these elk do not have antlers. This is because only the males of the species have antlers. which just means that they are a large, flightless bird. Interestingly enough, these, after the females of this species lay their eggs, the males incubate the eggs for 40 larger than the Asian elephant. The African elephant is a keystone species, which means that it is integral to its environment. They use those iconic trunks, which have more muscles than we have in our entire body, as well as their beautiful ivory tusks, to move trees and tear trees down to create pathways throughout their environment. If these guys were to go extinct, if these guys were to go extinct, um, the savannas of Africa would change drastically to a more forested habitat. It is a massive plant eater. These guys do not have true horns. True horns are horns that are made of bone and attached to the skull. Rather, the white rhinoceros horns are made of keratin which are the same, which is the same stuff that your nails and hair are made out of. So the horns will regrow if they are damaged, as long as they are not damaged at the root. Beautiful bold feathers that are actually attached to the back, not to the tail. Um, the females of the species are called pea hen, and the species as a whole is called pea fowl. As you can see, the ostrich is kind of ruler of the roost over here. Uh, this is primarily because they are crepuscular, which means that they come out during dawn and dusk. On your left, you'll see the Ankoli cattle, also known as the Watusi cattle after the Tusi people of Africa. They were reintroduced into the wild, and that summer, the first wild scimitar, scimitar horned orcs were born in over 30 years. Now they number in the hundreds in the wild. To be the Savannah Sunset Resort. This is an awesome glamping experience um, where you can actually feed our giraffes in the mornings. Additionally, it comes with free breakfast, um, a bar, a spa, and a cafe. Uh, each day that you book here, you will also get a pass to all three parts of the Six Flags Great Adventure. If you are on the right, you will also see the Udad. The Udad is also known as the Barbary Sheep. However, it is more closely related to the mountain goat than it is sheep climbers. You can tell the difference between the males and the females because the males typically have thicker, more curved horns. Another male black buck on your left over there. The attics is actually where the myth of the unicorn comes from. This is because as long as there is no damage to the horns, the horns will grow so symmetrically that from the profile of the... I relate to that. Um, however, they are more partial to their fruits and veggies. These guys are great climbers, the European brown bears. These guys were born last year. You can tell the difference between mom and babies because mom, babies tend to be lengthier with uh, larger ears. 
Unlike the American black bear, these guys are not good climbers. However, moms have been known to chase their cubs up trees if she feels they are in danger. These guys are more well suited to digging than climbing. They have shovel shaped paws and claws special to us here at Six Flags. Uh, this is because he was born to a first time mom. Unfortunately, his mom was, was not the best mom in the world. Um, and because of this, his, his mom was getting stressed out and he was getting stressed out. So our vet staff stepped in um, to hers or uh, jacks. The females of this species are called flyers or jills. And can anyone guess what the babies of this species are called? Joey's, good job, yeah. So we've just got done with the safari off-road adventure and I was about to start talking about it but I noticed that Best of the West is actually open. So Here's a quick look at the menu. I'm probably going to go for the Best of the West burger. That was one of my favorites. But my goodness, if I wasn't on the dining plan, $18.99 for a Best of the West burger is steep. I'm used to like $15.99, $14.99 for a burger nowadays. So I feel like $15 is probably, probably the average of what I see. And then over on the left you can see the salads and the sides that are available. For all my buddies like Coasters and Brews, I'm sure you want to see the beer prices here. The premium cocktails are $18.99. That's brutal. But for beer, $13.99 seems to be the lowest I see. And sangria and house wine by the glass as well, $12.99. Brutal. But there you are. All the prices and all the food on the menu here. Don't know if this is available quickly on the app or not. I should double check that. So sadly, I did not see the Best of the West actually even present on the app. However, we do have the all year and all day bottles. Is it me or have they gotten smaller? I can't remember if this statue left or not, but that's pretty cool that it's here. It's, <laughs> it's back again. Cause I think this whole space was opened up for the VIP area, the VIP lounge that they did last year. That I guess did not go over as a big success, but I am walking around wandering, just trying to take a look at this space now. I believe all of this, the bar space and all of that was present. They did used to have like a big area over here right by the door, but now they have this nice dining room, the couches are gone, there's no more free water or chips or anything like that. Oh, apparently there's a VIP section here, maybe they just didn't take that down. And then they have this nice dining area out here. I know it's a little overexposed right now, we can fix that quickly. <laughs> They're testing the fire alarms of course. But yeah, there's some really nice views right here. I'm going to wait for the fire alarms to stop. But yeah, this is a really nice space, really well decorated. And it's really nice in the summer to have this because there is AC here. But unfortunately, until, you know, the log flume opens, it's only going to be open while the safari is open, which I think is a pretty solid idea. I just don't think many people know it's open. So this is me letting you know. All right, let's take this apart a little bit so you can see what's going on here. So there is a regular patty underneath there. Then we have this mess of pulled pork and then some onion rings on top. And that is the best of the best burger. I would get this from time to time, on, to be honest, and it's never really let me down. The other thing I need to know about the fries, because this was the same scenario over at Granny's, is that they're like extra crispy when they come out. And I've been a big fan of that. Uh, also, obviously, it's worth mentioning, it hasn't been that busy, so I don't know, maybe the fries are just crispy when it's not as busy. Alright, so that was 
messy. That was a messy burger. The pulled pork was spilling out everywhere, but it was just nice to be back in there without it being a VIP thing, which that could be a whole conversation to itself. Why are theme parks nowadays obsessed with creating VIP lounges or DVC lounges? Uh, what is it at Hershey now, the giant size lounge or prestige pass lounges at Cedar Fair? It's just a whole thing nowadays, and I'm glad that got the axe here, or maybe there's an another place where there is one. But anyway, I used that opportunity to go back and think about like the safari experience and how that went and everything. And to be honest, it felt a little rushed. I realized that I, I got in line at like 2.30, 3 o'clock or so and didn't get on until 3. And it very much felt like, you know, when you're at the end of the day and you want to get done, it felt like we were kind of doing the quick version, the fast version of the safari, unfortunately. And that meant we kind of zip by and you'll notice from a lot of the clips normally I, I can get a pretty good steady panning shot of these animals on the safari I did it a bunch in 2019 but this time it, it was a lot tougher they were speeding by and that was even after the the truck we were in caught up to another truck there were apparently offshoots that they could go around and go through that bridge near the lions where you get the unobstructed view we went right through there and just zip by it we didn't even get to see the view also from where i was sitting i didn't see too many animals it seemed like later on in the day they were all navigating towards the center i was on the left hand side of the truck i would recommend if you're going later on in the day a lot of them are sticking on the right side of the truck which is more to like the center of like you're basically going in a big like semicircle most of the time and like the infrastructure and stuff kind of leans towards being on the right side so if you're there past like two o'clock I'd say sit on the right side but if you're catching things in the morning probably want to be on the left side because they spread out I see the feeders are on the left side also the elephants were towards the left hand side whereas I believe no the kangaroos also you would see them best on the left hand side close up uh, they were kind of set back on the right side the guide was great also I saw a s familiar face if you're a big fan of Jack Frost also uh, the driver did a solid job. There were some tight spots and like alternate routes that I have never gone through before that she took just like with a breeze. Also, it was a lot of fun to try to get a shot of the POV through the the whole front of the truck and that was yeah, just my thing, I guess. I don't know. It's hard to be cinematic though when you're like bumping around and stuff. But anyway, I think that might do it here. I think it's time this this is closed. Also, Best of the West closes with Safari. So we're going to have to walk all the way around through uh, the, what's the, El Toro Plaza de Carnival, which I just forgot, um, and just see what else we can get up to before the end of the day. Well, I hear Medusa coming, so we might as well stop for that, yeah? No effects, by the way. Honestly, it's operating so good these days, too. And the sweet spot to me for the seats, second to last row on the left side. Good timing here. El Toro is going. I wonder if they're still doing single train ops. That's something that we could investigate real quick. Operations update. Also, I don't know if Aiden will see this, but shouts to him for putting a lure module on the Pokestop for El Toro. This area looks so great opened up. Oh, by the way, El Toro definitely is on one train ops. But the other thing to note is that, and I don't know if this is going to be here for Fright Fest or if the interior has anything still left, maybe Big Top Terror is going to be moving. However, they seem to have a big history timeline here, which I think at some point we're going to go through together. However... This is a big one right here. Batman and Robin the Chiller. I don't know if any of you watching remember this one, but man, it was kind of doomed from the opening. This Premier Rides coaster, it was like a prototype, dual launch, and it looked, am I remember being a kid and thinking this looked amazing when both of them were going, but it was not. <laughs> it did not work as they had planned. There was a lot of power issues with launching them both. Just the power that was consumed all at once caused really big spikes. And yeah, that ended up not living very long. I think it operated for like five years or so. 
I'm not sure. I believe that there's a history of that's pretty cool that New Jersey Ghosters did uh, in co collaboration with one of the bigger theme park history channels. Also, I did not know Great Adventure had one of these. Is this the one that is at Great Escape now? Condor? Maybe. I remember taking a pretty cool photo of that when I went to Great Escape, but I never rode Condor. I just wanted to see at the start here, do they actually mention the original owner? I don't believe so, but this is cool. Do they have like a whole, oh interesting, a whole like, um, I don't know, archive or something? Who is this? Is this like Safari Sam or something? I have no idea. Oh, and what, remember, they used to have like an actual granny, walk around granny character, but I have no idea who these be, who, oh, okay. Interesting. But yeah, we'll talk about history another time. I can't tell you the last time there was a roaming character at Great Adventure. That's pretty great to see. It's not much compared to, you know, maybe a show, sit-down show that would be happening, but I appreciate Porky taking the time out to see all of his fans out here on Dream Street. So I was waiting for a little bit, but it's not a good time to get a, a video with Porky. He's got a lot of fans to say hi to, a lot of kids just running past me while I was attempting to record. But I did get an important note. He was walking around looking for where his brick might be, where he wants it to go. But he thinks most of all, this should be where it goes. This should be where Porky Pig exists, right in the middle of the four tents here. <laughs> so I figured I'd save you the time of me going to each one, but basically here's the update. Nothing's changed since opening day, except Jersey Devil Coaster is definitely on two trains, whereas opening day, it went on one for some reason, but everything else is running one train. Hopefully that changes, changes very soon, because things are going to start picking up as May approaches, but that's the deal with operations right now. Obviously, disclaimer, there could have been two trains and they pulled one off because it is 6 p.m. and they close at 8, but that's where it's at right now. But anyway, I think I'm going to leave things there. Batman the Ride. I haven't been on that in a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and get on this, and I'll catch you guys later. So, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and I hope you go make your own adventure.